Welcome back to Saturday Five. As always, thank you for all of your emails and messages about tonight's topics. N. Dunn says there is a complete breakdown of law and order and Labour have opposed any attempt to crack down on it in opposition. And now they're having to pay a harsh price for their woke policies. But Jack says, oh my God, I must have a terrible, terrible <laughs> high temperature. I'm agreeing with Benji. <laughs> <laughs> Me or now, Butterworth? <laughs> I presume, nah. presume Benji. Uh, now it's time for our next debate. And up next is our debutant, Claire <laughs> Pearsall, uh, to have her say now. Claire. Well, I really wish I could be a debutant. I think I could rock that outfit. But unfortunately, I think that the nation has sleepwalked into a time of higher taxes. What we saw on the election trail most recently was Labour saying the Conservative Party are awful, they have ruined the economy, and we're going to do a much better job. But, and this is a very big but, there is no money left, according to Rachel Reeves, the Chancellor. And how are they going to change that? Well, not by raising income tax, not by uh, dealing with uh, the debt situation. I should imagine what they will do is go after things like inheritance tax, capital gains tax, council tax, fuel tax, all of the things that they have refused to rule out a rise in. And as we've seen recently, they cannot be taken at their word. They wanted to be the saviour of pensioners but they're taking away the winter fuel allowance. Can you imagine the outrage if that was a Conservative government who had done that? The front pages of every newspaper would be evil Tories freeze granny. But no, it seems the Labour Party at the moment can do no wrong. Could this be that everybody is on holiday, they're not paying attention, but unfortunately winter will soon come, the bills will pile high and somebody is going to have to pay. Benjamin, you hate pensioners. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, I think we'll get on to pensioners later, but... You know, I think the fact is there is a massive black hole in the finances. And to claim that Labour has somehow made this up, as Jeremy Hunt seemed to imply earlier this week, is just wrong. Because I remember listening uh, in, I think, the second week of the general election campaign to Kevin Hollinrake, who was a Tory minister, say and acknowledge on LBC that there was a £19 billion black hole, which was the official figures put out some months ago. And he said, oh, they might cut justice and they might cut prisons if the Tories had got in. Okay. Now, it seemed like quite the mistake to do during the election campaign to let on. But the idea that this wouldn't apply regardless of party is nonsense. But the question is, why is there a £19 billion black hole? It's because Tories like you let that happen. You just kept spending. Boris Johnson didn't <laughs> see. He never went into a shop. He didn't want to buy. He just spent like there was no tomorrow. And we're living with the so, consequences. So, Benjamin, so, so that Tory <laughs> knew there was a black hole. Yeah. Why didn't the shadow chancellor? Ah, but they do. They do. And this is what the, the most disingenuous part of all of this yeah. is Rachel Reeves saying, we didn't know about it. We had to wait until we saw the books. When she had access to the top officials at the Treasury from January, she has been accessing the same set of figures that are in the public. And may I add, as everyone else. three weeks before the election, Rachel Reeves gave an interview to the Financial Times and she said verbatim, we cannot just turn up on day one at the mm -hmm. Treasury and say that there's a big mess and a big deficit we didn't know about because, I quote, we've got the OBR now. We don't need an election to know that. So isn't that is like plainly misleading, right? If they've no. seen it and now they're making out that they haven't, well, that's now, misleading the public. Well, now they're playing mind games, aren't they? Yeah. Because the whole reason that she's saying this is so that come the autumn budget, she'll be able to say, oh, look, do you remember I told you that we didn't know about this and so now I have to do this? It's just games and it's aimed at people like us to actually fill their pockets. Look, this week she has given £10 billion to public sector pay rises. That has to come from somewhere and it's going to come from the people in the middle. Even in the, um, uh, uh, the uh, de uh, debates, the election debates, mm -hmm. Keir Starmer at one point, when he was talking about his comments on Jeremy Corbyn's manifesto, effectively admitted that he'd say anything in order to get elected. Yes. He said something like, well, I said that because I wanted to get elected. Yeah. So is this not just a case of them saying, oh, well, we, won't, we promise we won't put up taxes, knowing that probably they will have to? But it comes as a surprise to, to absolutely no-one. If their slogan is change, <laughs> well, they're not really changing from... 
the old politics of, yeah. of the Corbyn era. So I don't think they can hold any moral high ground. And also, this. surely they're going to have to spend, spend, spend anyway, because they've already agreed this massive pay rise for junior doctors, and the junior doctors want more, and there's going to be a gold rush from all the other public mm. sector mm. workers who also want pay rises. They're going to have to spend money on that you know too, because the unions now? have got a gun against their head. It's GPs, it's going to be radiologists, it's going to be paramedics, it's going to be every man and his dog working in the public sector saying, oh, look, Labour have opened the floodgates. They've got a 20% pay rise. Where's my pay rise? It's going to be absolute chaos. Well, and do you know who they're going to they're target for that? People who pay capital gains tax primarily, uh, people who aspire, who take risks to invest in assets, stocks, commodities, shares, and they're going to come along and act into going into a, a bookmaker's on the corner of a high street and swiping the winnings from a, a punter betting on horse racing. They'll say, thank you very much. I'll have some of that. They didn't deserve it. They didn't deserve a penny of it. The two things that trashed investment in our economy were Brexit and Liz Truss's budget, which oh, undermined so, Britain so badly. So and look, and, and the GP strike, I'm interested to know what Renee thinks of it, uh, Dr Renee, I should say, uh, that was opened in June under the last government and was finished by the time that the percentage, the 20% pay rise came out not for junior doctors. Uh, I mean, the, the poll of, of GPs and whether they wanted to, to go on, on strike was finished. So it's not a consequence of the pay rise for junior doctors. It happened before that came out. Look, the pay rise for junior doctors costs about £1 billion. The strikes have cost about £1.7 billion. I'm glad that there is a government that's actually sorting stuff out because I think people at home will think, I just want to see a doctor. I've paid my taxes. I want to get the health care I need to get back to work, to get on with my They're life. They're not going to, are they? Because the GP's going to strike. And now, whether or not they voted for that, firstly, it was the BMA, 8,000 doctors. There were 64,000 GPs in the country. So a very small minority have voted. Well, are, you, are you saying that not voting is a legitimate but, uh, for the result. Very quickly, we're going to have to go to break. But. <laughs>